Hi, this is Bob from Insidium, and this is our first GPU tech preview. In this video, we'll explore XP Fluid GPU. Let's begin this tech preview with a CPU simulation. If you have a look in our object manager, you can see that we have an XP Fluid PBD active here, and it's creating, along with the emitter and the collision geometry, this nice cascading waterfall scene. If we have a look at our activity monitor, you can see that the CPU is being heavily utilized here to calculate these fluid physics and we're getting this very nice looking sim at around a frame 120 here we've got 140,000 particles and it's looking very detailed we're getting nice fluid motion but obviously we're not getting amazing viewport performance so let's just pause that and go back to the beginning of our timeline if we return to our object manager all we need to do is deactivate our fluid pbd we'll activate the new xp fluid gpu this uses all of the same X particles tools, so we can leave everything else the same. All we need to do is go to the emitter, to the new GPU tab, and activate GPU. Now when we hit play, you're going to see the same simulation, but look at that amazing speed improvement. We can actually see the water cascading down. We're getting really nice performance. And if we have a look in our activity monitor, you can see obviously the CPU is no longer being utilized. If we right click this and change the view to GPU, now our NVIDIA RTX 2080 is making these fluid calculations and we're getting that great viewport performance and speed all the way through the sim. Before we look at more examples of our new XP Fluid GPU solver, let's do a more scientific side-by-side -side speed comparison. So on the left of our screen, we've got our XP Fluid PBD, which is calculated using the CPU. And on the right, we have the new XP Fluid GPU. So let's begin our CPU first now. And there goes our scene. And then we'll start our GPU a little later and see if it's able to catch up. So as our particle count increases, our CPU calculation, we're getting three frames per second now, but that's dropping as the particle count increases. Let's start the GPU, and there we go, and look at it flying through that simulation, and already that has overtaken the CPU calculation. It's coming towards the end of that now, and there it's finished. 11.1 seconds it took to simulate those 151 frames. That is 13 and a half frames per second. So let's turn our attention back to the CPU solve, and it is still solving those 151 frames. We're coming to the end now though, and our frames per second is reduced down to about 1.5, and there we go. So total time, 49.5 seconds for the CPU. That's a frames per second of 3.0. 05. So in this scene, the GPU simulator was almost four and a half times faster than the CPU. In this scene, we have a splash tank set up. This is using two emitters and our new XP Fluid GPU. As you can see, we're getting very nice fluid motion and excellent viewport performance here. So if we go to our modifiers tab, you can see that we have our gravity active, but we also have some inactive modifiers here. So let's activate this XP rotator. Now this is a CPU based modifier. This isn't being calculated on the GPU, but we can still use it with fluid GPU and we get excellent speed. So if we have a look at this and press play, you will see that we get the same splash, but now our rotator modifier is forcing those particles around and we're creating this very nice whirlpool effect. And then we switch that off and you'll see that they'll gradually start to settle and lose that rotation motion. Let's go back to the beginning. We'll deactivate that rotator and we also have an attractor modifier in our scene here. Now this attractor modifier is also a CPU calculated modifier, but we're still going to get some great results uh, with XP Fluid GPU. So if we take our attractor, let's just deactivate it while we get our initial splash. Then we'll activate our attractor. And then if we move this attractor around, you'll see that in real time, we're able to manipulate those particles and drag them around that tank. Let's bring them back here. 
switch off the attractor modifier and then they'll settle and splash where they were. We've also got a wind modifier in this scene. So if we go back to our first frame, let's activate this wind modifier. You can see this is pointing in the plus Z direction. Uh, we've got some wind strength and some turbulent force in this wind. And now when we hit play, you're going to see a big splash and a really strong turbulent wind is now blowing those particles up to the side of our tank. And we're getting, as I say, excellent viewport performance and fluid motion from this modifier. So let's now run this side by side with the XP Fluid PBD solver to see just how much faster the XP Fluid GPU is. So again, we'll set our XP Fluid PBD calculating first. That's obviously on the CPU and we'll give it a head start. So there goes our animation beginning. Now we will set going our XP Fluid GPU sim and look at the difference in speed. Absolutely flying through that sim once more. So much so we're almost at the end already. And there it goes settling and we finish on 11.4 seconds total time. That's a frames per second of 10.54. And we can see our XP Fluid PBD on the CPU is still doing well, looking nice, great animation as always. It's starting to settle now, but of course, taking an awful lot longer to simulate. So here it is coming to the end of the simulation and it's going to be almost a minute total time. And here we go total time of 56.5 seconds that's a frames per second of 2.14 so the xp fluid gpu is just under five times quicker than the cpu thanks for watching our xp fluid gpu tech preview in the next video we'll be exploring some more fluids this time xp fluid effects gpu so until then see you later